It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and welcome to Fail Friday. This is the series where I either fix your baking fails, my baking fails, or I help you to avoid a fail. On this channel, if you're new here, I offer baking tutorials, decorating tutorials, and I also offer you home baking business advice. And today, I'm going to be talking to you about the things that I had to stop saying to my customers to avoid stress and to save me money. So let's get into it. I can definitely color match that for you. Yeah, no, I can't. I think over all of the complaints, this is one of the complaints that kind of came up a couple times. And for some reason, it took me a really long time to just realize that I needed to stop saying that I would be able to help people color match things. Now, for the most part, when you show me a picture, I am able to duplicate that color. But there are some things that you have to keep in mind. First of all, a lot of the ordering that's going on is via instant message or via text message. And so really what you're seeing is you're seeing a screenshot of something that they're asking for. Now from eye to eye and even in different lighting and even from phone to phone, even the same phone, colors can show up very differently. So it's really impossible to actually get the exact shade of something. So how did I fix this while still giving my customer what they were looking for? Well, I gave them a few pointers. So I would generally try and find out what the item that they were purchasing was for. Is it for a birthday party? Is it for a wedding? Generally, it was for something like that. So I would actually talk to them about how color palette is more important than actually nailing the exact color. So if their wedding colors were pink and white, for example, but it was like a hot pink or something like that, I would tell them that yes, I can try making it on the darker pink spectrum. However, it might not be the exact same tone. I mean, if you know anything about coloring, you know that there are warm tones, there's dark tones, there's all these different tonalities that play into the color. A color is not simply just pink, really. It can be more red, it can be more purple, it can have a bluish tone. It really is difficult to nail the exact color that they're showing you. So I would talk to my brides or people that were buying things for birthday parties that it's going to be within the same realm, but it's never going to be the exact same color. And it is so important to make that absolutely clear. Because if you don't make that clear upfront, then you're kind of setting yourself up for potential failure. And the chances of you getting the exact right color are very, very slim. I mean, as time goes on, you're probably going to get better and better at matching the color. And yes, we always try to improve upon that skill. There are tons of videos out there with people who specialize in decorating cookies and they've actually color mapped out all these different brands and all of that so that you really do get as close as possible to the color. However, I do think that it's unrealistic, especially if you're kind of hitting the ground running with your business to go and actually work on all of those color projects. Because really when you're doing orders at the rate that I was doing orders, you don't have time for that and you don't have time to research it a whole lot either. So now in my spare time, I am able to do things like that. But realistically, when you're running your at-home baking business, although you're improving all the time, even with things like color, I think it's a lot more realistic to just tell your customer that you will try your best to get it as close to as in the family of that color, but that you're not going to nail the exact color every time. If you make macarons like I do, then this is really, really important. So for things like icing and buttercreams, you can really sit there and try to get that color right. And you can try over and over and over again, and chances are you're going to get pretty close. But with macarons, you kind of have one shot and that's it. Because if you've ever made macarons before, you know how difficult it is to color them. It's not about add a little bit of color, mix it up and see if you like it. It's add the color that you think is going to work and then mix it up. And right now, color trends pop up all the time. And I especially found it difficult with maroons or different types of blues. Do you know how many different types of blues there are? Even within the Wilton line, the Americolor line, there are so many blues. But the sticker on the front is never really super, super true to how it's going to turn out 
in the macaron batter. So I really learned very quickly to tell people that I'm gonna try to color your macarons X color, but it could come out a completely different color. Are you okay with that? And I was just really upfront with it because I was tired of dealing with the stress of it not baking up the way that it should have or the way that I thought it would. I will make this cake or cookie exactly like the picture. So you guys know I am all about replication. If you watched me in my replication video with my friend Rachel, then you can see that we're pretty good with replication on the whole. But no replication is perfect, perfect. I mean, I've seen some amazing artists out there, so wow. However, I do think that in the cake world, there's always a slight bit of finesse where it can go one way or another. It's just that little spin of artistry that you have. So although I never actually ran into any difficulties with this, once I ran into trouble with the whole color palette issue, I started also saying this to customers. I am going to try my best to replicate the photo that you've given me, but there may be slight changes. And over time, you're going to build up quite a big portfolio of work. So chances are, especially because things are trending all the time, they're going to bring you a photo that has been circulating for a while. So you're probably going to have made something similar to that cake before. So what I usually like to do is I would say, I'm going to try my best to replicate that this is an example of a cake that I have done before. Is something like that what you would like? And generally, people are really chill and relaxed, and they'll be like, yep, yeah, that's great. Now, if they're not, and they say, no, I don't like that, then you really need to start going step by step with your customer to really pinpoint what it is that they don't like. Sometimes people are very picky and they have a particular vision, but they can't pinpoint what exactly is wrong with a particular thing. So it's our job as the decorator to really hone in on what it is they're looking for. What is it about the picture that they really like? When somebody shows me a picture of a character cake, I'm really focusing on the details of the character. But little do I know that really they could care less about the character and they're actually caring about the really crisp lines on it and the perfect drip and they want those particular glitter sparkles used or whatever. So it's so, so important that you nail down what it is about the picture that they're showing you that they like. Once you nail that down, make sure that you don't guarantee any 100% replication. I truly believe honesty is the best policy in this case. And when you're just starting out as a baker, it's really easy to over embellish your abilities as a baker and your abilities as a decorator. And I'm not saying that you probably aren't amazing at creating something wonderful, but the chances of you being able to create it exactly like a picture and really nailing down what your customer is asking for are slim if you really, really don't communicate. Final thing that I really had to stop saying to my customers. Now, again, I actually never got any complaints regarding this, but I really, really had to stop saying, you're going to love how it tastes, or this is the most delicious cake, or this is the best option. I really, really had to stop saying that. And instead, I started turning my statements into something different. So all the time, and I don't know why this happens, but all the time customers are asking me, is it going to taste good? As if the product that I'm giving you doesn't taste good in my opinion. I really don't know why customers ask this question. I mean, I sort of get it. You want your product to taste good. If you're going to be spending hundreds of dollars on something, you want it to be a good payoff. However, I mean, we're the most biased person you can ask since we're the ones making it. So instead of answering that question in a kind of automatic way saying, of course, my product is the best product and it's so delicious. Instead, I like to use I statements. So for example, a lot of people will ask me, well, which cake flavor is the best flavor? I mean, yes, I, I do think that there are flavors that I sold that were better, but that's because it's my palette. So I would make that really, really clear saying, I love chocolate, so I would go with the chocolate ganache filling or something like that. And another thing that customers would always ask me, especially in this area, and my parents often say this too, but they would ask me, oh, I just wanna make sure that the cake isn't too sweet. 
Now, I always found this really perplexing because if you're actually running a lucrative home business, chances are you're making your cake in bulk, you're freezing it a lot of the time, you're not actually baking it fresh, unless there was a very, very specific thing that they had asked for that of course you're gonna charge extra for. Anyway, I think it's really strange when they ask me, oh, please make sure it's not too sweet. I mean, we use standard recipes. It's a standard recipe. And I feel like it's so hard when you're first starting out. You want to appease your customers. You want to seem like you are all encompassing and that you are wanting to work for them. But you really have to be honest in this regard. And I just started saying after a while, I use a standard recipe. I haven't had complaints. I myself don't like too sweet of desserts. So for me, it's the perfect level of sweetness. That way, it kind of just is like, you know, this is what I think, but you might think differently, except you're not putting it on them. You're kind of putting it on yourself instead. That's a big customer service tip right there. So yeah, making sure that you're not making any guarantees about taste or flavor are really important. You can emphasize that you use fresh ingredients if you do that. Maybe you use organic ingredients. I'm not sure. Whatever you want to drive home is what you should drive home. I just think that we shouldn't be making promises about taste when everybody's palate is so different. So all in all with my three things that I had to stop saying when I was running my home baking business is you really have to be transparent and be honest with your customer base. Being honest and really making sure that I had all those buffers in place and making sure that I kind of covered myself, it really, really helped eliminate a lot of the stress because I could look back on our textual conversations and see, oh yes, I did warn them that the color palette is not going to be exactly the same and I warned them about everything else. Now for the most part at this point in time, when I started saying these things because anything to reduce the stress level of the amount of cakes that I was pumping out was good. Once I had gotten to this stage, I had already had a huge portfolio of cakes and cookies for people to look at. So they really already knew what they were getting from me. But I think it's really important to kind of start saying these things right off the bat. If I had known to say these things right off the bat, I would have, and it would have saved me a lot of headache. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading daily so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye! Also be sure to submit your baking fails and it could be fixed by next Friday.